Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, a new video. Today I wanted to do a quick update on my uh, Mac setup script. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, a while back I was working on this like little playlist of videos where I was basically just trying to create a script to sort of set up as much of the preferences and the apps for a, you know, Mac system as possible. Started off very like weird and ghetto and ended up getting relatively uh, good at the end. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's been quite a while since that uh post the last time the last video here was uploaded on october 1st of last year and it's april now so it's been a good while at least six months since the last time that i talked about this on the channel and in that time uh, i've actually had time to look at the app several times, the script several times. Uh, I've set up a new Mac, I've used the update script, which was a portion of that, to every, uh, at least once or twice a week, every week since I created that script. Uh, and so I've got some changes I wanna make and, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, one thing I should mention is uh, it used to be a separate GitHub repository on the GitHub page. If you were looking at it, there'd be a repository here called Mac Setup. I decided that was kind of dumb, so I just merged it with my dot .files. Uh, in my dot .files, I have a dot .bin folder where I store a couple of bash scripts. Um, you know, I've got one to check how many people have died so far, and uh, so that's very exciting. And then I've got another one to uh, create some directories and then... Of course, right down here, we have an install script and an update script. These are the Mac setup scripts that I originally created a long, long time ago now. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, let me get a terminal started up here and uh, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and change directory into that .bin folder. Here are all the scripts here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the update script. Uh, now the last time that we looked at this in a video, I believe it looked a little something like uh, this. All I've really added is an option to update uh, NPM apps. Now the only actual app that I use this in NPM app is I have this Spotify CLL app, CLI app that will let me, uh, you know, search for a playlist on Spotify and play it and basically just control Spotify from the command line. Um, so I, I went ahead and just added an option to update NPM apps as well as brew applications and as well as cask applications and Mac app store applications. So there's four different different repositories basically they were updating with the script so what I actually want to do is a couple of days ago I was messing around and I noticed that if I just run brew cask there's a setting here brew cask outdated and I was looking around and MAS also has a command called outdated of course it's not gonna work there's nothing outdated right now and brew just general brew also has a command called outdated you can run it and all this is gonna do is basically tell us what apps are going to be updated when I run this well when, the next time I update uh, it'll tell us what version we're on now what version we would be upgrading to and the name of the app so I thought this would be like a cool thing to add to the script. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to say echo, and I'll say uh, apps to update. And then what are we going to do? We're going to do brew outdated. We're going to do brew cask outdated. And then we're going to do MAS outdated dated and then what this should do is basically just print out before it starts running the script all of the apps that are going to be updated the main reason i want this to happen is sometimes i'm updating and as i've been using like brew and cask a lot more i've gotten a few like really big apps like uh mac Tex, for example that's a latex package for mac os that's two or three gigs to install and so sometimes to update that is like a lot <laughs> Um, it, it takes a little while to update, especially if you're not on the fastest internet, which I often am not. So if I start to run update and I realize, oh wow, it's about to actually update that and it's gonna be crazy. Um, what I can do is just cancel out of it as I just did. Well, maybe I can. And then I can instead run something like brew, cask, update, you know, OBS. Let's imagine that there were several apps listed, but one of them was a Mac text, and I just want to do like a quick update on a couple of apps. Mainly what I'm getting on here is just, it's always a good idea to have more uh, information rather than less. So there we go. Um, one other thing I will know, when I ran that script, if you'll notice here, uh, it said, here are apps to update, listed the apps, and then it went straight to updating applications. I'd like to add a little bit of spacing between there. So we'll uh, open up that script again. And let's see, let's do echo and we'll just do a space. We can probably do the same thing with both of these. 
It'll just make it a bit easier to read. And then I'm also going to add a colon here. That'll make it a bit more organized and... Okay, cool, looks good. Um, I think that's about it for the update script. Now, let's get into the install script. This was, of course, the main portion of the video. And while I may use the update script every week, when this thing works, it's freaking incredible because it does everything for me. I've more than once, I've, re uh, you know, wiped the hard drive or set up a new Mac. I run this script on it. I just sort of sit there and put in a password or hit yes or give a, you know, a little bit of affirmation whenever it needs it. And it does all the work for me. Um, I will say these actual commands for changing preferences preferences are like the sketchiest part of the apps. They're very fickle uh, because you just have to get them exactly right. Basically what we're doing is we're changing Apple uh, P list files with these. And I've talked about this in one of the past videos, so I'm not going to go too much into it, but just keep in mind, if you're working on something like this, these P list file edits are going to be probably the sketchiest part of the script. I think I've gotten it to the point where everything works now, but that was definitely not always the, um, so couple of things I want to do here. One of the first things that we do is we request sudo access. That's good. And then we change to the home directory. Make sure we're in the home directory. That's great. But uh, the way that this script is organized, we install a whole bunch of preferences. And then down here at the bottom, we do a lot of like actual work to uh, install all of the apps and we uh, set up dot files and we install anything that we would need to install. So I want to rearrange this. Uh, basically what I want to do is I want to move all of these plist file edits to the bottom. So the reason for that is that I want to use these plist files to edit some apps, you know, that aren't going to be on the system by default. Uh, one of the good examples of this is I've been using this window manager called Rectangle. There are some plist settings that I want to change, but of course I can't do that until the actual app is installed. So I'm just reordering reorder the script to install all of the apps that I want to install and then change the plist files. So I'm going to go ahead and come right up here to the macOS preferences uh, setting and I'm going to copy in all the stuff that I want to change. So these are just some additional plist edits for, you know, third party apps. In this case, the app is rectangle. I think I'm repeating myself here, but that's okay. Uh, and then I'll just set that to 0.98 and uh, 10. Okay, cool. So one last thing I have to worry about when I'm setting everything up. Awesome. So now let's get into sort of the main part of this script. Uh, first of all, one thing that I've noticed, installing the Xcode command line tools is very sketchy. It does not do to have it as part of the script. So what I want to do is I'm going to come right up here to the top of the script and I'm going to say echo and I'm going to echo out are you are the Xcode command line tools installed. And I'll say, if not, exit using command plus C and install with, and I'll put in just the actual command line thing that you need to install. So it's Xcode, select, and then dash install. Reason for this, when you run the Xcode install command, it will open up its own little window. It will start installing the Xcode command line tools, and then it will attempt to just keep running the script. Uh, I did not foresee that being an issue, uh, but that definitely popped up. So the way the script works now, you need to install the Xcode command line tools first, and then we can run the rest of the script. So get rid of that. Don't need that anymore. We're still going to request sudo access and change directory at the beginning. Uh, and then one thing I also want to do is I want to type in a read answer. Um, all I'm doing is I'm telling the script to read an input that someone gives and I'm using a variable called answer. Um, so if I run the install script here, all it's going to do is it's going to wait right here. When it's asking how do I have the echo command line tools installed, it's going to prompt me to say something. And I could literally just type in any letter and hit enter and it will start working. It will go ahead and ask me for the pseudo password, which is the next thing that we need. Really, I'm just putting that there as a stop so that I can't, you know, accidentally run the whole script without having installed the Xcode command line tools because that's just not gonna do us any good. Uh, next thing I wanna do here is down in the, well, here we go, new window target path. Uh, this is a plist edit that we're doing for the finder. And basically what I'm doing is I'm setting the finder to always open in my home directory. Now, the way that you do that in macOS is you have to use the entire like actual link. You can't just do, you know, tilde slash 
and that will start in your home directory. You have to link slash user slash X. Um, now I typically use the same username, but I don't want to just rely on that to always be the case. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a variable here. Uh, it's going to be uh, dollar sign you name, and this can just be our username. And then right here, I'm going to say echo, and I guess we'll echo out like a space and we'll say echo what is your user name on this system cool and then we're going to say read you name this will read what we want and then just to check and see if this works right i'm going to go ahead and echo out the uh you name here and make sure that this is working the way i want it to so if i run that script again okay i've got the command line tools and then i ask what my username is i'll say you know it's Okay, it'll print out. Sweet. So that's what we want. Okay, next up, we'll go back into that script again. And let's see. I'm going to go ahead and clear these app lists because I'm just going to update them in a second. It's been a while since I updated the apps that I install. Uh, if you don't remember from the original video, the way that this works is... Actually, I probably don't need to update the Mac App Store when that hasn't changed at all. Uh, so the way this works is I set up like a little uh, variable where I can list like a little, uh, I guess it's a variable, where I can just list out all of the apps that are going to install. And then when I come down to the actual install portion of the script, I just run one command as a brew install. And then I select all of those apps and it just installs everything at once. It just, it makes it a bit simpler, I think. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to delete all of this nonsense for a second. I want to move this bit where I install homebrew up right, basically right to the top. I'm going to put it, I guess right after we ask for sudo access and go to the home directory, we'll just install homebrew immediately. Next up, um, I run brew update and brew upgrade before I do anything. That's generally a good practice. I don't actually really need that anymore. That's not an issue with alacrity. Uh, installing vim plug. I do still want to install Vimplug, but I need a different script to do it because I have been using NeoVim more recently. So if we go over, search for Vimplug, and I just need to get the NeoVim version of that, which should be do, 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 right there. So we'll clear out of that, and there we go. Um, I'm not using oh my zish or Powerline any of that anymore, so don't need to worry about that. Um, the last thing that I actually need to do is just link up my dot files, or and then we'll you know do the app list. Actually, before we do the dot file stuff, um, if I were to, let's see, let's pop that over there and we'll get a new terminal. Um, if I were to do brew cask list, that's gonna list out, list out every cask that I have installed. Now if I make this window a bit smaller, try that command again, so these are all of the casks that I have installed. So all I have to do is come up to the cask variable and just literally paste these in. And that's all you have to do to update the cask list. I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the brew stuff. So these are all of just the normal apps that I have installed. And I'll go ahead and copy those over as well. Okay, so now we have all of those app lists installed. I'm going to go ahead and quit out of that, and we'll go back to full screen. And now all I have to do is set up my dot files. So uh, the way that this works is if I come into a file explorer here, uh, what I do is I create a folder called repo, repository, and then I just clone in my dot files. And these are pretty easy to get a hold of if you go to, we, are, we were already on the website once a day, if you just go to github.com slash my username and then dot. These are my dot files. And I've got configs for bash, alacrity, invim, all the stuff that I generally use. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'm gonna just create a new command here. Uh, we need to do it before we install vim plug, but after we install all of the apps. So what I'll do is I will return to the home directory again, just make sure we're there. And then I'll do, I'll do a make directory and I'll call it repo. And then I will change directory into repo, into repo. And then I will do git clone the link to my dot files. That's gonna go ahead and download all of my dot files. Not quite done there. Here's what we need to do. We need to create some symbolic links. This is how I link to my dot files. So I'll do dot slash uh, repo slash dot slash hash. And then I will do home directory slash hash. 
Now, what this is going to do is going to basically just let me copy over uh, whatever uh, file that needs to be. So I'll make a whole bunch of copies of this because we're going to need to do quite a few links. And let's go ahead and get started. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to copy over my dot config folder. So if we take a look here, this is the dot config folder. It's stored in now repo slash dot. And this has configs for Alacrity and NVIM and NeoFetch and HTOP and NVIM and VIFM, uh, whatever. All I need to do is I'm going to replace, whoops, dot config with dot config. That will make a symbolic link to that file. Then we're good to update. Uh, and then what else do we have here? We've got uh, tmux we want to link to. Uh, so I'll do dot tmux.conf. Uh, same thing here, dot tmux.conf. And let's see here. Uh, we've got a bash rc we need to link over. Uh, bash rc and um, a dot profile file, dot profile. And is that it really? I thought it was way more than that. Oh, the dot bin folder where I keep all the scripts, of course. So we'll do dot bin and dot bin. And then I think if you're doing a directory, you need to add the slash at the end. So with our dot config folder and on our dot bin folder, we'll add the slash on the first, uh, on the like link from location. And oh, and then I have a git config file. So I'll do git dot git config and dot git config there's nothing like super confidential in there I'll, I'll show it to you right now so i don't mind just keeping in my dot files all it is my name and my email i use uh, ssh to actually update uh git which reminds me i need to add an option to create an ssh key this is one of the last things in the script so uh that's actually all the dot files there's a lot less than there used to be but that should link up all of my dot files to where they belong and then i'll go down to Let's say about probably after we do the vim plug install and i'm just going to say echo do you or we'll say now you can make an ssh key if you want um let's just surround that in quotes to make sure there's no like issue with it i've been writing echo out here without anything in quotes and it will still will work like 90 percent of the time i just don't want to take a risk of breaking it because i'm too lazy to put in some quotes here okay so we say now you can make an ssh key and uh oh i remember uh and then we said echo press control c if you don't want to so what we actually have to do is we have to move this to the bottom of the entire script and uh okay we'll come up here we'll say echo installation complete and then the very last thing that this script will do is give us the actual option to create the SSH key. So the way that that works, the command for that is SSH keygen dash T ECDSA dash B 521. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, I think that's gonna be a good update here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, that is all for this video. Uh, hopefully this, these scripts should work uh, quite a bit better. Uh, thank you everyone for watching this and I will see you in the next video.